everyone, and welcome to an all new episode of the latest thread. Today, we are talking about quilts for special occasions. And in particular, we wanted to highlight t-shirt quilts because they're, they're seem to be like the most common kind of gift quilts that people make for graduations, birthdays, and, you know, things for youth, or even older people who are like, uh, wanting to have uh, shirts for uh, remembering concert they've been to, their favorite um, music bands and, and things like that over the years. So um, we're going to share a few tips for you and then you're going to just um, enjoy a lovely slideshow of some pictures that we put together for you of some t-shirt quilts that we have quilted. So why don't we share our tips for doing t-shirt quilts? I know people ask about that a lot in the Facebook groups. Yeah. Well... <laughs> I, one of the main things I want to talk about is um, the interfacing that's being used to back those t-shirts, because especially if they're sashing, if they're not um, interfaced properly, then because how stretchy the knit is from the t-shirts, I'm speaking about t-shirts specifically. Um, then as the foot goes over the t-shirt and if it's not adhered properly, then all that excess gets pushed towards the sashing because it has nowhere else to go because the sashing is cotton usually and solid <clears throat> kinda. And so that presents a problem that can result in you know, puckering, and there's really nothing you can do. So if I get a t-shirt quilt in, I usually look, you know, flip it over and see what they've used. And people can use different things as long as they did a good job, you know, of using it. That's really the main thing for me because, you know, nobody will be happy if there's puckers. So me personally, I like to use uh, woven um, interfacing. Um, yeah, and I should have been prepared. I do believe it's by uh, Pelon. There's a specific number. Uh, I think it's also called flex shape, but it's actually fabric, you know, and it's fusible. It's a woven. Mm -hmm. so. I've had some even with the stabilizers on there and, and the interface and they're still the, these these t-shirts don't ever stop stretching they're just i think that's why we love t-shirts you know because <laughs> they're comfy Carrying them anyway <laughs> <laughs> they couldn't form to your body so that's a good thing <laughs> yeah. So, um yeah i mean i've had so many like t-shirt quilts over the years and it's just they're not i don't want to say they're troublesome they're just they take more of your time than like if you're just doing an edge to edge because I still have to like manipulate the fabric a lot, even even with the stabilizing. So you'll see in the slideshow, like almost every one of mine is meandered. You know? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. I do the same thing because I think even the people that do a really good job of, it, of ironing and getting it on there, there's always those couple places that, you know, like maybe where the, the holes were from the iron. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And that's just enough that it'll shove it to the side. So I basically, I will only meander t-shirt quilts for like 20 years of doing it. That's all I'll do mm -hmm. because then you never have to cross over. So there's no chance of a pleat and you can make things fit where they need to fit, you know, if it's extra. So and yeah, design choice is definitely important <clears throat> for those because of that fullness getting trapped. So if you have a line of stitching and then you have another line of stitching coming this way and there's a bit of extra fullness in there, it's got nowhere to go. <laughs> it, it just <laughs> just folds it over. So, I mean, depending on how well they're done, you can use some more intricate designs, but generally I'm going to do something that I can, if I'm hand guiding, I can scooch around it really, really easy. Um, most of the time we will do computerized designs on t-shirt quilts, but sometimes you get t-shirt quilts that have um, thing on, things on them, like um, pockets, uh, buttons, um, mm -hmm. bling. You'll see some pictures with like more yeah. things added. And so like it's, it takes more time. You can do it computerized, but it takes more time to set everything up. So that's like, oh, I can just meander around 
those mm-hmm. rhinestones kind of thing. I had a trifecta. I think it's in the slideshow. It's denim, t-shirts, and karate belts. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh man. Let's get it all in the one quilt. Mm-hmm. But like, yeah, and the other one is like the jerseys, like the the team jerseys, because it's not even like a screen print. It's like yeah. thick, thick plastic ink. Mm-hmm. And I'll I'll keep alcohol wipes by my machine because as it goes through all that paint there's a buildup on the needle and I'll just wipe my needle every so often so it's not causing yeah. some skip stitches there yeah yeah I would say that. probably one the biggest tip is always check your bobbin before you start the next pass because you really don't want to run out of thread yeah. because a lot of those super thick um you know iron-ons mm-hmm. it's making a hole there so yeah. if the thread breaks or the thread, you know, runs out, you have to do it by hand and do, go in those same holes because those holes are not going away. Yeah. Um, I have the, a couple of pieces of the new Gamel um, approach foot system uh, here. And I, and I thought they may be um, useful to mention people, probably a lot of the, one of the best pieces of advice is to use a spoon foot, but maybe they don't know why. So when you look at the spoon foot and I'll put it in front of my face, so you can see the background. Um, <laughs> it's a it bowl, looks like a right? spoon you're it's eating. A saucer. Yeah. It literally is like a little spoon. And then your regular ruler foot is just, it's full contact all the way around the bottom of the foot. So when your machine's taking its hopping, its stitches and the hopping foot's moving around, you've got a tiny little footprint that's clamping the fabric sandwich or the quilt mm-hmm. sandwich around the needle instead of a wider base kind of pushing the fabric forward, if that makes sense. And that can really absorb um, a lot of fullness as well as um, sometimes I'll reduce my stitches per inch for t-shirt quilts, just so it eats up a little bit, tiny bit more fabric with each stitch. So if I'm stitching usually around like 12 stitches per inch, I might go like 10 or 11. Do you guys do that? And this, a spoon foot is like a godsend because mm-hmm. t-shirts are thicker and just having that curved edge gets that up and over the that next it's, especially you're right especially you know some people just put t-shirt to t-shirt yeah. mm-hmm. and then when you know if they're not all the same thickness and even if they are as those seams come together you know then the seams of the t-shirts are a lot more bulky than, you know, for quilt blocks. So the spoon foot is definitely helpful, especially when it comes to some of that bling, like some of the thinner sequins, he can still, you know, it's not an issue, but of course, it's another story. (laughs) It's a case by case basis. I I also wanted to talk about, you know, I've gotten t-shirt quilts that are king size and they had so many t-shirts that they thought it would be a wonderful idea to do t-shirts front to back. (laughs) And, you know, with the quilting, it's absolutely not an issue. Um, However, do you realize how heavy that is? I know some people like the weighted blankets, (laughs) but (laughs) it is so heavy especially if the choice was to add warm and natural batting in that mix. It makes it super heavy. So I have to ask you a question. Can you clarify? You said t-shirts front to back. Do you mean the backing made out of t-shirts as well? Okay. I haven't done one of those, but. Well, especially if they wanted to be matching up front to back. Oh yeah. That's one too. <laughs> but no, if you have so many t-shirts and you want to incorporate them all, make two quilts. So yeah, I make a couple of lap size ones. And yeah. I guess we should talk about thread. Thread color is something worth mentioning. For sure. Because, <laughs> because we have the t-shirt, well, the t-shirt quilts I get usually range from white to black with green, blue, red, yellow in between. Mm-hmm. And so we already talked about the designs and you made some good points, but the thread color can be challenging. I usually go with gray 
um, you know, whatever shade blends best. What do you think? Yeah, I stick with the taupey grays usually. Yeah. I have one exception to that. And that's when you get the Harley Davidson quilts. Because that's a common one for the t-shirts with all of the Harley Davidson, the Sturgis and all of those. Yeah. Uh, I wanted it in there. <laughs> yeah. So it, we're, we're, we're totally cliche and we use like flames for a design. And um, if you have variegated thread, like a black and uh, orange variegated thread looks good on them or even just black or orange. So other than that, definitely like different shades of gray on just blends with everything that's in there. Yeah, it's easier to try to blend everything than just make one fabric happy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And often I change to a, a lesser weight thread also because I want it really to sink, you know, because the t shirt quilts, the knit, you know, the thread can sink into the knit. And so if I if I have trouble making it blend well, then I will go with the 60 weight thread versus the uh, 40 weight thread just to, you know, try to keep the, this quilting in the background. Yeah, so it's it's just a texture instead of the mm -hmm. thread interfering with what's on the shirt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like looking at the t-shirt quilts people bring in because yeah, they, I do too. Yeah, they, they tell like a story about the person like it could be like the sports teams or, you know, like I said, the bands or concerts that they went to and just kind of get a, a snapshot of um, their, a person's life. So yeah. that way. Right. And, and I think when you're choosing a design, because yeah, I always, I had never done a meander on a t-shirt quilt. I always tried to choose a design. And so the t-shirts, that are in there can tell you, you know, about who that, the personality of that person. So you can kind of choose a design, you know, that fits that personality, so. So we've got um, a collection of awesome quilts that we have quilted over the years to share with you. So you can sit back and relax and just take a look at all these photos, enjoy.
Well, we hope you enjoyed that little collection of t-shirt quilts that we have quilted over the years. And we hope that some of our tips help to give you some success with working with t-shirt quilts in the future. And uh, if you have some t-shirt quilts that you have done, we'd love to see you have, uh, have them posted in any of the Facebook, Gamble Facebook groups. And uh, feel free to tag us so we can take a look at the wonderful work that you guys have all done. We thank you for joining us and we will see you next time with an all new wonderful topic on the latest thread. Bye. Bye.